It was a mom and daughter luncheon that um, we had for our very first time, uh, Rebuilding Women presented, and it was at Generations. The food was great. Our speakers were amazing. What do y'all think about it? Can y'all share what we what happened and what was the most highlighted time of the e afternoon? And, you know, so let's, let's go from there. Why don't we introduce ourselves first? Oh, that sounds good. That might be nice. Oh, we, we have, have two new. We have, we have two daughters today. that are new. My daughters are now. Yeah, they're familiar with the show. I mean, with the broadcast. But we do have two wonderful daughters of yours. So this is why she wanted to absolutely, make the announcement absolutely. of who's here. But go ahead. You can go on that side. Go ahead. And who are you? Hi, everybody. I'm Tamaria. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanisha. Okay. You can, even though they know Hi, you. Hi, everybody. You guys already know, but I'm Taylor. <laughs> hey, I'm Kendall. Hi, I'm Donna. And, of course, I am Danette. <laughs> so we have the Perrys and the Menifees today. Yes. So we are just talking about moms and daughters' relationships today. and But right now, uh, we're going to share a little bit of what happened on yesterday. So tell us what was maybe the highlighted time or, you know, just, just tell us a little bit about what happened on yesterday. Anybody can go. All right, um, <laughs> I loved it. Um, Pastor Fondry and her daughter Kayla came and spoke some real true words, um, things that I believe mothers and daughters actually do go through and have to face, um, obstacles that do happen, and real-life situations. So I really enjoyed them and them breaking it down to better help me and my mom's re uh, relationship. So I enjoyed it. That's good. Anybody else want to grab in? Um, my favorite part from yesterday was the scenarios that the daughters played as their relationships between mom and daughters. And it was every scenario was true. That's good. Um, I just, I completely enjoyed the entire um, afternoon. We had fun from beginning to end, um, mother-daughter challenges, um, you know, mother and daughter speaking to one another, real life situations being brought about, and um, hopefully changes being made in real life situations. And I'm looking forward to, we're going to call it our annual lunch. I'm speaking it into existence. We're going to do this, and we're going to do it again. And, you know, maybe we'll put a spin on it, because we have some mothers with um, sons that are single parents of sons. So maybe we'll do a mother children day or something. But um, it, it was great. Those that missed it, I'm sorry you did. Uh, Danette tried to stream it live as much as possible, but it was an awesome, awesome time. I enjoy, for me, um, just decorating uh yours, yours truly, truly did, did that, that so, so just thought i'd put that out there but um i enjoy <laughs> that gia which is a teenage ministry they uh, planned the entire games and the games were so interactive between my mom and daughter it was so funny um myself and donna uh, did something we were just feeding off of each other of how our life and our homes really are and uh, it was really, really fun. And it was just hair down. You know, we relaxed. It was a relaxing uh, situation. Um, and we also was talking about uh, how to communicate effectively and really, really love our moms. Or we really need to love our daughters and know how to talk to them without yelling. I'm a yeller. Everybody knows that. But uh, my daughters know that anyway. Um, so it's teaching me and it has taught me to not scream so much or yell, kind of talk in a, you know, a more calm way. I'm going to ask my daughter, so far I've been doing all right, even though it's been one day. It's been 24 hours. <laughs> I told her, I told Taylor, I'm going to call her next week. You know, I did good. I came home, I laid down, but I was so tired and I don't know why. It's not that we did a lot of... Um, you know, work, it was really fun though. I think because of the laughs, the music, we were singing, what's that song? We ended it on uh, Tomorrow, Tomorrow, the song Annie. by Annie. And we were singing and we had a very loud mom that was Amen. extremely loud that we didn't even know why she was singing louder than anybody. <laughs> but we had a great time. But it, that was my piece of how I thought it was. 
Tanisha? Um, I had fun. I... Hmm. It was an eye-opener for me, kind of, because I know me and my mom don't really have a great relationship. And I know part of it's on me, but I feel like I have more to prove since I'm like the middle child, quote-unquote, type. Mm-hmm. And I'm the baby girl, so it's like I feel like it's harder. But yesterday's luncheon really helped me try to figure it out in a more better way to figure out like how me and my mom can work on just us. That's good. That's good. All right. Kudos to me. <sighs> Pat myself on the back. But those were the ha- tell it. You say anything? Oh no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday was really fun. Um, the games were amazing, even though they like messed up my games. But anyway, <laughs> it was really good. Um, Auntie Fondry and Kayla, they did an amazing job. Yeah. I liked how they were so transparent. And uh, even though she's a pastor, that's her daughter, but they collaborated it together. Um, to really let us know that they're human too. Um, and it was just amazing just to hear, you know, her, for her testimony has been two years old, being smashed between the car and absolutely losing every ability below her waist down. And she's a miracle in itself. So that kind of let me know that um, with, with Pastor Fondria and her daughter, that uh, it, although it was a lot for her being a single parent, they still loved each other. They still had real life situations just because she's a minister or a pastor. That does not, um, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm trying to say? Exempt. Yes, exempt from not being real. We're real first. You know, We are mom before a minister or a pastor. We are definitely human and I am a mother before anything. And everybody know how I feel about my daughters and my son and now my grandbaby. There are the first things in my life, and then it's ministry. That's the difference that we have to, um, you know, do dis- decipher from. You know, do we all agree to that? I agree. Um, I always tell people that I'm always a mom first. Um, you know, we both have four. Actually, we're both equal with three girls and a boy. Um, and I will always be a mom. You know, I always ask, when, when, when do you stop being a parent? When, when can I just say... I don't want to be a parent. I, you know, let's just be cool. But then I get that phone call, Ma, can you help me? And it's like, man. You know, and, and my oldest is 32, and it goes on down. And I don't think I ever have not gotten a call from 32 years of a, can you help me do this, that, and the other thing? So I'm just waiting. I told them all, I'm waiting for that day. Somebody's going to hit it big, and I'm going to be able to sit back and just be Donna. Yeah, I can't wait to that day. <laughs> I'm waiting. It happens when Taylor becomes whatever or Kendall becomes whatever her desires, her heart's desire, so that I can sit back and enjoy and reap the benefits. That's what I'm waiting on. Girl, yeah. we're waiting. <laughs> we're waiting for that. But let us uh, take a quick uh, break real quick. Uh, the number you can dial in again is 617-282-0685. We'll be right back.
This is for the saints. A message for the saints. This is for the saints. Say a little out of y'all, what? This is for the saints. A message for the saints. This is here we go, here we go, here we go. Put your hands in the air. God's gonna answer your prayer. Everybody say, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. A little louder. My chance is slim, but I won't go getting analytical. God made me a promise, and his word is true. If you trust in God like me, he'll do the same for you twice. Good. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome back, everybody. I wanted to uh, also continue to talk about what what happened on yesterday at our event. Uh, we have a few inboxes from some uh, some women that were attending the event. So, Donna, can you just go in there and see what they're saying? Um, sure. So we have um, one question from Sister Sonia. And I don't even think she was there. I was Facebooking live on, on this she one. She was Facebooking live, right. So, so she was she was kind of watching us live. Um, she had an emergency situation, but she was still tuning in with us and um, joining us um, when she could. And she actually, on live, said that she took yesterday was when Fondria said there has to come a time when motherhood and friendship meets. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic when Fondria said that because I often tell that to my girls that they're at an age now where we should be friends. Um, I always distinguish between friendship and buddies. I always tell them they're buddy, they can talk to any type of way they want to, they can say anything they want to. We don't have that type of relationship. You can't say anything or do anything, but we can be friends and I want us to be the best of friends um, with my girls. So I thought that was great. And, but she wants, Sonia would also like to know, how do you determine when that happens and how do you do it effectively? So how, when, how do you determine when motherhood and friendship meet, and how do you do it effectively? Um, hmm. How do you determine when it happens? It depends on, I think, the relationship between a mom and daughter. Right. It'll just, for me, me and my daughters have a great mom and daughter relationship as well as a mom and daughter friendship. Um, but to determine when that happens... It's between the relationship of a parent and a daughter or a parent and a son um, to, for that to effectively happen. So for me and my daughters, we're very close and we're good friends. And I don't want them to ever feel like that they can never come and talk to me about anything, uh, whether it's dating, I, even though I don't want to hear it. This is what's going to happen. I mean, you know, I want them to marry and, you know, have babies and, you know, stuff like that. So I expect for them to come to me versus going to their friends and not thinking that, oh, I don't want to talk to my mom because she won't understand. Although I don't want to hear it, it's life and it's being a mom. And I have daughters and I have a son. So when my son, thinking of thinking of kids, my son has a daughter, uh, you know, Ava, my granddaughter. And when he told me, I was, you know, I was a bit surprised, but I didn't come down on him hard. I just was like, you know what? I'm here, whatever you need me to do. You have nieces, you, you know, you have aunts, you know, that we're here and you're the grandfather. So he has, he had the support of all of us. And that's important being a friendship and, you know, with the mom and daughter or mom and son. 
it's important that we have an open relationship so that we can effectively kind of, you know, love each other and trust each other. Is that a, a call or something or no? No? Okay. And um, I think you also have to determine, like, um, your child. I think you have different relationships with each of your children sometimes. I have four children, and sometimes you have to treat, like, all of them differently. But they're finally at an age where... Well, Sometimes, you know, you still have to be mom and you have to put on your mom hat. Absolutely. You know, and um, kind of lay down the law. But because, and mostly because, and they don't like it sometimes, but you've been there. As a parent, you've been there. And so you, you're trying to stop them from making some of the mistakes that you've made along the way. And I think somebody asked that question yesterday. Did they? Like, um, why won't she let me make a mistake? Right. Like, we're trying to protect them, but don't want them to get out there and experience life we're trying to cover them mm -hmm. like let us make a mistake but i was with her mom i'm like i don't know how i feel about and i did and, and this is what i did I, I had one you know they wanted to jump out there and do what you want to do well you know god bless you you you, you wanted to do that mm -hmm. just know that i'll be here to support you when it falls apart because the way you did it is bound to fall apart mm -hmm. so but I did not discourage it. I did not discourage what, what they were doing, the, the moves they wanted to make. Um, I, I, my oldest daughter lives in Florida. I cried like a baby when she went. Um, her dad was fighting tooth and nail against her going, but she's been there now for 10 years, and, you know, she, she's happy and she's doing well. But it's hard. It's hard not being a parent. It's hard not wanting to protect them, even mm -hmm. at the age of 30. You know, yeah. your child, you know, we, we have grown children, and it's hard just not wanting to protect them. But I'm okay with letting you go out there and, and make your mistakes because you learn from that. That's how you learn is when you do make your mistakes. And just know that we'll be here to, to help you through them. Um, you know, I just don't want our children. Sometimes our children fall on us as we're the crutch. Mm -hmm. Um and, and that's kind of hard. I, th I think that's like a, a hard thing, you know, like when to know when to not be the crutch. Yeah, it is hard, but that's us being a mom. That's our role. And we are to be lifesavers at any given time, whether they're in their, their 50, whether they're 30, whether they're 10. So that's just our role. But today we were talking about uh, our attitude as moms. Um, like I put on Facebook of what we're talking about today. Um, the attitude you have as a parent is what your kids will learn from more than what you tell them. They don't remember what you tried to teach them. They only remember what you are. For me, I have to, I can't have two sides of my mouth I'm speaking out of. You know how we'll say, oh, you live in one way and you're doing something else. Mm -hmm. But you tell me not to do it, but you do it. Um, I... As a mom, have to learn. I had to learn this. It wasn't easy for me to just say, "Oh, um, you know, don't, don't like, a, don't like this guy. You know, he's he's no good for you." Or, um, what am I? What am I trying to? What am I trying to say? Let me just get off the guy thing. Attitude. I'm going back to the attitude. I can't treat you or talk to you any kind of way, and expect our relationship to be good. Uh, between a mom and daughter or a mom and son, it depends on how you talk to your kids will determine your relationship. If I always come down screaming at my daughters, talking down to them, saying they're worth nothing, you know, not encouraging them, but discouraging them, that can affect the relationship. Teen, I mean, daughters, what do you all think about that? Good afternoon. Yeah, like you said, um, you can't like just be yelling at us or living a certain way and then like your actions don't show okay. how you claim to live. Mm -hmm. So like you have to be the example. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Hold on, okay? Yep, I agree. Um I I think we have a caller. Okay. Um caller? Call you there. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hey, this is Tamika. Hi, oh, Tamika. Oh. That's my other Menifee. 
Yes! I know y'all are so surprised to hear from me, but I, I see my mama and first lady on the radio, and I just had to call and surprise my mama and my sister. <laughs> What's up, Tweety Bird? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love all y'all. Love you too. Thank we you for calling you too. me. Thank you. Yes, and it is so true because I caught what my mom was saying at the first half, and it is so true. I think you'll never stop being a mother because I know I, I always call my mommy. <laughs> no matter how old you get, you'll always still need your mommy. That's true. And mommy <laughs> will always be there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, baby. All right. <laughs> we'll talk yeah, to you later. Have a blast. Talk to you later first. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That was my oldest from Florida. Nice. <laughs> Calling in. See, I, I want to be a mom that my daughters can talk to their kids about. Even the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because I want them to know the real me. I don't want to be a, um, what do you call it? artificial mom you know I have my flaws I have my uh, you know downfalls sometimes I'm not a perfect mom and I used to feel like I had to feel like I was perfect because I didn't want because I had daughters um, but I came to this realization that no one's perfect and all I can do is just learn on the way I've never had a daughter to go away to college this is gonna be very very hard for me to let my daughter go away to school <sighs> yes and so we're gonna I, be, it just, it we're gonna praise there. all the way there. there. Gonna, that's there. all right. We're gonna dance all the way as she's going. But you know what? I trust Taylor. I trust every bit of Taylor. I know she will continue to be a young woman of God that is going to be focused, that's going to do and remember what me and her dad instilled in her. So I'm missing. I will miss her. But I know letting her go is going to allow her to grow up, to be a young lady, Absolutely. to grow up into a woman, and to, you know, to really focus on God and, and um, getting her degree. So I, I support Taylor. It's going to be a hard pill to leave her and, you know, to swallow that. But it's going to be worth it in the end. She's going to make us proud. Have I ever told you that? <laughs> But what do you guys think, um, your relationship, Tamari, you haven't said too much down there. What do you feel about, as a mom, sh how should we tr be in front of you? Is, does that determine your relationship? Um, yes, it does. Because as young girls, we look for that role model that we can look up to. We look at our mom. Our mom is usually our first example of how to be a woman and how we should portray ourselves and how we should walk. Um, so... I believe your attitude definitely reflects onto your child and how they will eventually see themselves and mm -hmm. carry themselves when they do become young women. That's good. What about you, Kendall? Um, I think that actions speak louder than words. And if you tell us to act one way, we expect to act that same way that you taught us. And um, you shouldn't expect another way from us that you don't show us. Or, so we need like a role model to look at. That's good. So what do you all think? How are we doing as role models? You better not tell the truth. Huh? Yeah, no, it's radio. You Holy better say the Lord best thing tell ever. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell, tell. <laughs> my mom was my homie. Like, it <laughs> took a while to get there, but I can finally say my mom is also my friend. Um, sometimes it takes that personal connection that you have to go through and at the point where you have to talk to your mom. Sometimes growing up as young women, first person you don't want to talk to is your mom. You don't want their honest opinion because you know that's what's going to happen. But um, at some point, you do go through some personal change, life change, some type of experience where you need your mom's advice. And I think that's when I became my mom's friend, when I realized that I can actually talk to her about anything and get some advice back rather than all the yelling. Mm. You know what I want also is... Um I believe that when you go to your mother, I realized this when I first went to my mother um, about personal issues. When you go to your mother with something, it stays with your mom. You know, um, you can go to your friend with something and all of a sudden all your stuff is all over the place. But your mother will always have your back 100%. 
When you go to your mother with something, you don't have to worry about Tom, Joe, Dick, Hat, all these other people. Like, you don't have to worry about all these people knowing your business. Your mom will always keep your stuff because they want the best for you. So I'm not saying that they may not like the conversation that you're bringing to them. And they may go back and, you know, they may, Lord Jesus, why would... But they're going to give you the best advice that they can at the time, knowing that we're not perfect. But we're going to give you the best advice that we can and go off of life experiences that we've, that we've had. There's almost... You all are living in a different time, and we understand that, which was why I think as parents we're sometimes more guarded yeah. with our children. Because I used to always tell mine, when, you know, my, Tanisha, my youngest daughter... I used to call her my flower child as a, when she was younger. She loved everything and everybody. Just She just loved everybody. And I'm like, Lord, my child would just walk up to anybody and speak to them. And I'm like, can't do that, you know. She don't love everything and everybody anymore. But, you know, and she likes, she's more of a free spirit. So she'll go out there and she'll do things. And I'm like, you can't, even at 25, I'm like, where are you? What you doing? You know, when, when you're going to be home? Because there's too much happening out here on the street. And every time, if I hear of a shooting, I'm on the phone right away. Where's my child? What, you know, what's she doing? It's anxiety that you have. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always tell my kids. Like, I don't really comfortably sleep until I know you're in the house. Once I hear you come in, I may not say anything, but once I hear that door and see you go in, now I can actually rest. Yeah. I don't have that issue. My daughters are always in the house. Then I, I got <laughs> grown children. I know, <laughs> but I'm going to be, um, but I trust God. Um, it's nothing that we can ever do to stop, you know, the time. Yeah. Um, but all we can do is pray for our kids. I have a son, you know, he's gone all the time and I used to be up all night, but I'm like, Lord, I'll give them to you. And that's it. Even though I call and say, you good? He don't ever answer the phone. So what's his, it doesn't matter. All I can do is just pray and say, God, cover him wherever he's hard and pray that his, where he is. Uh, it's not where I hear the, the, where the drama is. Mm -hmm. So that's why I go to sleep at night. When I know that he loves God and I pray to God and I don't stress out no more. But the, with the girls, um, they're really good girls who are very, very um, shopaholics. They're shopaholics. So, yeah, I think we did that um, as moms and dads. So, But I don't mind doing for my daughters because they're they're attitude and how they talk to me is very respectful where I don't mind doing what I need to do for my daughters now don't take that as you know don't I, I mean, we're on the radio you know, it's <laughs> all for, to you the know, mall. don't we're not going to the mall <laughs> after this but um I they what the new J's come out in two weeks uh oh Please don't talk about sneakers because you're the one that get me in trouble every time with sneakers with my kids. I'm up at 7 o'clock at the mall sneaking out the house trying to get what they need. But uh, my, our attitudes as moms is very important, and I had to learn that. Um, I thank God for my aunt, Connie. You know, I know she's listening in uh, because she will make sense out of everything. When I want to just go off, she will come up with a scripture that will calm my nerves down, and then I'm ready to talk. And you need someone as moms. We, we don't know everything, so we need someone that we can talk to to make sure that we are doing, uh, we're being right for our kids, too. So I thank God for her because I honestly can say she can make sense, and she's not even a mom. That, that's, the part, that's the funny part. She's not even a mom, but she has a bunch of kids, which is her nieces and her nephews. And what she do, she try to keep us on track with the word of God, but she also is realistic, too. So I just know attitudes between a mom and daughter is very important in a relationship. Everybody agree? agree. Now tell me this. Uh, we're going to just take a really quick break. Um, if you are listening, 102.9 FM, or you can dial in at 617 282-0685. We'll be right back.
our youth pastor live at the Faith Center, integrity recorded artist Jonathan Nelson featuring Purple. And we are back. Uh, we were just discussing, um, you know, the attitudes between a mom and with a mom being in front of our daughters or sons. But oh, um, <laughs> um, I had a call. One second. I uh, wanted to make mention we're, before we end the next 15 minutes. We're going to be talking about trust uh, and trusting between a mom and whatever our kid our children's um my my issue with trust i'm just gonna say from my stance and everyone else can just jump on whenever um when trust is broken with me um i know you make mistakes but i do give you enough to you know i i, I let go the rope enough rope to hang yourself. yeah you know enough to hang yourself right um but for me and with my daughters or my son, like I trust my kids. And that's major for me because once you break the trust, and it's gonna be, it's gonna leave a little nasty taste in my mouth about, because I'm open enough that you can easily come and tell me something. So for me, never break my trust. It's, it's not hard to get it back, it's just going to take some time. We have a great relationship. I don't ever want trust to be the issue that our relationship crumbles. Um, we're close. Y'all can tell me anything. I will not share. If you say don't tell nobody, I won't. And they have to, it has to be trust, trust both ways. Mm -hmm. Because if they can trust me to tell what their feelings, and they're like, don't tell, tell what I just told you. Like Kendall will say, Mommy, I want to talk to you about something, but don't tell Tella. I'm not going to say, Tella, girl, come here. Let me tell you something. Don't you can't say nothing. You, we can't do that as moms um, or dads. But I'm talking from a mom standpoint. So trust, when that breaks, it's hard to get it back. That's true. Um, so, I mean, it, it is. It, that, I think that is very true. Trust is one of the key things in any relationship. Um, Mother, daughter, mother, son, husband, wife. I mean, that's like the, the root of everything is trust. And it is very hard once the trust is broken to try to find a way to get it back. It can come back, but just know that when the trust is broken, there are certain things you, you have to now prove yourself to get the trust back. And it's a longer path to proving yourself than the path it was that you took to break the trust. Um, and as I said before, you know, the relationship between a mother and her child, you're, I think a lot of us mothers want to be at a point where we want our child to be able to come to us and talk to us about anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and trust that when you come to us that we're, we're, we're keeping whatever you have with us. Um, as I said earlier before, you know, we're, we're not perfect. We don't have all the answers, but we're going to do the best that we can for you as our child. Um, no mother ever wants to 
stray her, to, to turn her child in the wrong direction or um, I will never, I never talk down to my children. I never tell them what they cannot be or, you know, I, that always turns me the wrong way when I hear parents like straight cussing their kids out. I mean, that always bothered me when I heard that. And um, it was funny because yesterday, Tamaria was one of the scenarios that Taylor gave Tamaria and um, Tanisha to do about me um, was basically um, given the, like, they, when the, your mother has some food and the child comes in and it's like, can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? And Tamaria's like, my mother's not going to get mad about that. My mother's just going to give us the food. <laughs> so, and that's how the scenario ended up turning out between her and um, Tanisha and Tamaria, my two daughters. And so, you know, and, and that's basically me. Like, it takes a lot to kind of get me to that level um, with my kids to really get me to where I'm really mad at you. Because um, I try to keep it, I try to keep a, you know, pretty even keel um, temperament with them. Uh, other people I may not be as, you know, I might go there a little bit quicker. But um, with my kids, I try to keep it even keel so that we can talk. You know, and I'll tell them in a minute, you know, let, let's, let's talk about this. You know, come to me and, and let's discuss it and see where we go from there. But um, I think, you know, all these girls are wonderful girls. I think, you know, they're all very respectful. I think uh, Danette and, and I are very proud of um, all of our children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, I think we've done wonderful jobs. Absolutely. <laughs> Telling Kendall, Tamaria, Tanisha, what do you all feel about <laughs> Oh, oh, well, thank you very much. And Tanisha, you. Uh, you haven't talked very much. What would you like to say about mother and daughter relationships? And trusting. And trusting and everything. See, I'm not a big fan of trust because it's hard for me to trust people. When it comes to anybody, parents, friends, they've done so much to me in the past. So the future with trusting people, it's hard to but get my trust from anybody. But you can. I uh, can. You can. Especially but, with your mom and dad. Yeah, I can. I can trust them. I do trust them. Good. But with me getting older, my trust is to a certain extent with anybody. I don't want to put all my trust into somebody and then they do something to break it. Because that breaks me down. I'm getting tired of being broken down. So to avoid it. I put my trust in God before I put my trust in anybody. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Always put your trust in God than man. Because man will fail you, but God Every time. won't. Good. And what I've always tried to tell her was, you know, sometimes you have to look at the, the people that you have in your circle. Um, I'm very closed as far as my circle is concerned. I don't let a lot of people in. I, you can count. My girls can tell you every single one of my friends. Because that's just how I am. And it's because of, you know, those trust things. But what I've also wanted to let them know was, yeah, I'm not saying, you know, you can't trust a lot of outsiders, but you have to be able to trust your parents. Again, you may not like the advice that's given to you. You may not like everything that they are saying to you, but know that they always will have your best interest at heart. They will always have your back, no matter what. And I think... Um, with my kids, they've, they've, you know, every single one has done something that I've not agreed with. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone can ever say when they've gotten themselves into a situation that we were not there to help them through it. Um, and, and that's our job as a parent. We may admonish you because that's our job. God will admonish you for doing something when you're, doing, when you're not doing right and you're not walking in that Path, path that he has guided you to but it's done everything is done in love what do y'all think trusting moms and dads uh, I think how important is that to you I think it's very important that you trust your um, mom and dad but like Tanisha was saying you don't have to trust other people so it, you really should trust your if, any, if, you tr if you trust anybody it should definitely be a parent so that's good. And the great thing is you all are fortunate to have mom and dad. You know, you all can call on either one. And that, that's a great thing to have um, in your life. You know, they, a lot of people will say, 
you know, I don't need my father, but I think a father plays a very important role in every child's life. Absolutely. And I'm, you know, I'm fortunate that my kids were able to to have their dad every day of their life, and that's fortunate. And you all, you know, all these girls, which it's great. A daughter needs her father. You know, a son needs his father. They always say that, you know, the son needs his dad. No, a daughter needs her dad also. And I'm just, you know, it's very fortunate that you all have, you all have great foundations. Which is why you all are the young women that you are. And, you know, you're very bright young women. And, you know, I think, again, you all have done excellent as far as, you know, trying to live the life that you're supposed to live. Maria, anything? No? Uh, no, like Pastor okay. Fondria and Kayla said yesterday, I think respect um, and trust is something that you have to earn. Um, you go through things and you go talk to your parents and you trust them that whatever happens will stay between you guys and they will have your best interest in heart um, and be able to help you through that situation. And I think the trust with the parent and child is very important because today you can have a friend that you talk to and then tomorrow they're gone. But your mother will always be your mother. Your father will always be your father, no matter whether you like them or not. Those <laughs> titles just don't change. And that trust should never change because at the end of the day, they're the ones that will be there for you. Yeah. Yeah, but I've had experiences where trust has been broken, but it also opened your eyes too. Um, sometimes you just have to learn and then once you learn and see who you really who really are your friends or who you really can trust life will be so much better because you'll be stressed out because if like you said they could be here one day and gone the next mm -hmm. um, but even your mom and da dad could be here if we're talking physical right you know but just the relationship with the mom and or our relationship with our parents with kids it's very important uh, you should always love no matter what. You may think we are trying to run your life or trying to tell you what to do. That's not the case. Uh, the things that they try to pull over on me, I've done that before and got away with it. So I'm a pro at knowing. Amen. You know, when they try to come for me for something that I'm like, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Uh -uh, I did that. So let's think of something else, you know. Uh, like, for instance, my daughter's going to go to prom and she wanted to know. Uh, what uh, what time should she come in? For me, I say one o'clock. Uh, the, the prom was over at midnight. You need to be home by one. One, yeah, one. Am I wrong for thinking that? What are you gonna do? Man, she, I mean, it's prom night. Kids like to go out have fun. Cause I know my prom. I went to Boston Bowl, and every child at the prom goes to Boston Bowl have some fun. So why one a.m.? I think that's too early. Oh, well, what's, what's early for you? I mean, what's a good time? I mean, it's Boston Bowl. They got to have some type of fun. School's over. They about to graduate soon once prom is over. No, what's a good time? You tell me what's a good time. What you think, Tay? Two, three. Two. Yeah, two or three. Two so or the question is, so what are you going to do? Now, again, Tanisha told trust. me she was going to Boston Bowl. So it was cool. You all are going to Boston Bowl. But I think I had someone picking them up. I think tomorrow you picked them up. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> that was my comfort level. Mm -hmm. Tamaria is going to be around. That's her sister. Tamaria is going to let them have fun, but she's not going to let things get out of pocket. So, I was cool. You all go. You have a good time. So, do you have plans between after prom? Probably go get some need or something. Okay. See, this is where that whole trust thing comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I trust her. Right. Trust. So you mm -hmm. all are going to go out to eat. So fine. Yes. So we say, you know, 12, that's 2 o'clock. But I'm going to be transparent. You know, I'm a grown woman now, okay? I went to prom. You know the root, routine. We go, mm -hmm. we hang, you know, I would tell my mom something else. So I broke mm -hmm. my mom's trust. And my mother, you know, it was not good. Our relationship kind of fell apart with me not being honest. Um, and now it's better today. I'm a grown woman, but now I have daughters that are growing up and I'm a little more lenient than she was with me, but I would expect for my daughter to be home by one. If she's but going I, out I, to I'm eat, flexible. If she, if she, if we're going to, I'm going to be, I'm, we're going to talk to her, Tay Tay. 
Because if I she's mean, going she's out to girl. eat, I she is. She's, she's a very good girl, which is why I'm saying she's saying they're going to go out to eat. It's so just me. They're going out. The prom ends at midnight. The so they're going they out to eat. By the time you get the food delivered, you know, at the <laughs> table, they have to eat, you know, and then I get back home. So, if she so I think 2 a.m. is what we're going to root for. Yay, yes. Tay Tay. Mm-hmm. Just let me know where restaurant. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be sneaking, sitting on the side. Yeah, well, you Can know, I give you a to-go order. We, Tamaria <laughs> might be your driver, but um. but I trust <laughs> bet- between mom. I, I I definitely trust my daughters. I trust my son. All I can do is just continue to pray and keep them before God. That's it. And in order to keep a good relationship that we already have, don't break the trust. That's what I would say. But we are down a, a few more minutes. But I had ran across something where I was about to, dear daughter, I have daughters, but I have a son too. Uh, if I could give you one thing in life, I would give you the ability to see yourself through my eyes. Only then will you realize how special you are to me. Isn't that so Aww, sweet? Dear. Yeah. Aww. That's sure. very sweet. And I love my daughters and my son to the moon and back. And... If what I see out of my eyes, you know, I wish they could see how great and how amazing, wonderful daughters that I have. And I get so teary-eyed because they are so special and they, uh, I love them dearly. I love them dearly. You know, a word I heard today was, um, and I think as parents, this is a good thing. Um, We don't look so much at your past or your present. We're looking at your potential. Um, so we, uh, when we look at you, we're looking at what we know you can be, not necessarily what you are or what you've done in the past, but we're looking at your potential as to what you can be. And, um, I like Danette, love my children. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my children. I'd give my life, um, for my kids and, I just want all of you all to know that when we, when we're looking at you, just know that we're looking at your potential. That's it. That's good. As we end, I like to end on a good note. I'm a mom. My house is always loud and messy, and that's okay. Because one day, it will be quiet, spotless, and lonely. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. God bless you all. Have a good day.